Hi, this is behind the scenes of a farmer mistakenly drank his own herbicide and a farmer sprayed one liter of herbicide in between his legs. Video is linked in the description below. This video is not as complicated logistically as Katie Coleman's video was. Rather, it was complicated by time. The BTS shots here were taken by Desiree Troy, production assistant for the whole shoot. Also, this farmer drinking his herbicide video is published on YouTube in 8K. Usually when I do my videos, they're done individually. Very seldom do I work at multiple videos at the same time. But in this case, I had to do multiple videos at the same time. Pre-production, so when I'm writing the video, planning everything out, writing how I want to explain the pathophysiology, the medical part, I usually have some people helping me. Ultimately, the farmer drinking herbicide and the analogous related video published on Nebula first, for obvious reasons you can see from the title, all these videos were done together. Now, this video is not specifically sponsored by Nebula, but this video does include the BTS for that one. You can see the Nebula one at the link in the description below if you're not subscribed to Nebula. And also my link gets you 40% off an annual subscription, which is $2.50 a month. And your subscription helps me, Chubby Emu, directly while you get access to not just my videos, but to many creators' videos early and ad-free. Logistically, what complicated this video was that I needed to publish both at the same time. And therefore, with how my schedule is laid out, I shot both of them at the same time. This first diquat drinking herbicide case, which came from my colleagues at the Poison Center, and the second paraquat dermal application toxicity was published in literature. I would say don't pull up the publication of the latter because there's extremely graphic images contained within. The reason I set it up this way is because both diquat and paraquat are in the same class of chemicals, and they exert their toxic effect in the same way. However, the caveat in humans is that there's a difference between the two molecules in their nitrogen spacing, and that's why the final result looks different, although during the poisoning, paraquat and diquat are virtually indistinguishable. One impacts the brain, the other one impacts the lungs. The unifying feature here is that both of these videos are featuring a farmer. While Diquat you can get in any home improvement store in the United States, Paraquat is now restricted use. Also, in China, there's a lot of Paraquat cases being reported both in medical literature and the news. They're also restricting the use due to the potential accidents in humans. I did buy an actual bottle of Diquat for this video. It's right here. And I put it in this plastic bag because I uh, just want to make sure that no one's actually going to drink it. I might accidentally drink it if I don't do this. I didn't use any of it either because you can see it's still in the bottle. Okay. Originally, I had scheduled this shoot on a farm, the same one where we filmed the cow antibiotic video. But the actor, Wolfgang, asked me if we really needed to be on a farm because we're in the middle of summer right now. Foliage and weeds are everywhere. The cow antibiotic video needed cows in it, and you can't just get cows in the background of your video whenever you want. So that's why you'd go on a farm for that one. But you can get weeds in your shots basically anywhere at this particular time. So a barn, or really you just need a tool shed, can be easily done without driving far into the country to be specifically on a farm. So I elected to save some time in driving and we're on our way. I said in the previous behind the scenes that I block off at least half a day to record narration, but this is two videos. So I blocked off two days and why? because I'm talking for 20 minutes straight in a narration track. If you ever record yourself doing that and then record yourself again on a different day, you'll find that your voice changes the more you talk in a single session. And maybe your voice is healing for the next day, but there's definitely some videos of mine where I have to patch the audio in the narration so that I say a little bit more detail or I say something a little bit more precisely. People are gonna let you know in the comments that it sounds different. And it's not because the audio equipment has changed because I actually leave my camera in the same place, microphone, everything, it's there for at least three days after I record the narration to make sure that I didn't mess anything up. It's legitimately my voice is different the next day or several days later. Just finished recording the Diquat video. You can see camera rig right here. Gotta have a monitor here to check it out. And then that's the camera. If you notice, the lights are very blue over here, whereas they're very yellow right here. Now, the reason why these are daylight balanced, and that's because this is only in daylight. I have a gel that you can put on it, but I didn't put it on there. And also the light up here is also another daylight balance. It's not bicolor. So because it's not bicolor, you can gel it or you just leave it. And because these are bicolor, 
we can then just set it all to daylight. The thing is, I don't like usually setting things to daylight because I have these. Now, these are dinosaurs, apparently, that people don't like to use, but I like to use them because the colors are all there. Now, I want to show you a difference. The Diquat narration was filmed with Blackmagic Ursa 12K in 12K. 29 mil Supreme Prime at T2.8. The Paraquat narration, though, was filmed with Sony FX6 in 4K DCI, Sony Zeiss 50 1.4 at F2.8. The difference is less profound when the FX6 footage is processed in DaVinci Resolve rather than Final Cut, because I think Final Cut sucks at color processing, at least right now. But does it really matter? Probably not. And in my use case, the autofocus on the Sony, Paraquat one, Massive time saver, which brings me to the days of filming. The Diquat video had the hospital images captured on Ursa 12K, Supreme Primes at 12K. The time saving part here is that the look is built beforehand and is applied in the file and is captured as metadata with the actual footage that's captured. I can check it on and off in DaVinci Resolve, but it's included with the B-RAW file because I had built the look beforehand. And on the Ursa 12K, monitoring is miraculously easier than on the FX6 and on the Canon C200, which I used to have. So what you see is what you get in the editor. I don't need to worry about any of it because if it's properly exposed when you did it in camera, it's gonna look okay when you're editing it. But what I did have to worry about was not having a first AC, so I had to pull my own focus. Now, when we went to the workshop location for the Diquat video, I opted to bring the FX6 instead. The Ursa 12K built out with a zoom lens is heavy and I don't have an easy rig. I do have a couple of motors for focus, but I don't want to rig them onto the camera. It, it basically, it just wasn't worth it. Although a viewfinder would have been nice outside in the FX6, at least the one that I have uh, isn't rigged with one right now. So that was it for the Diquat video production. Post-production was done in DaVinci Resolve, and here's where one of my gripes are. I edit these videos myself, and Resolve in some ways is easier to edit in. I don't actually have a choice when I use the Ursa 12K, the B-RAW files have to be done in Resolve, not Premiere. And I'm never using Premiere ever again if I don't have to. There's a plugin for Final Cut called B-RAW Toolbox, but in my experience, it's slower to render than Resolve. Uh, it makes things a little bit more complicated. It's okay as a plugin to cover work that might have some B-RAW clips throughout, but I'm not gonna subject myself to this if I don't have to, which means for all the animations and everything for the medical part, I have to export out audio tracks to get the right timing, render a master in Final Cut or After Effects, and then add it back in through DaVinci. Rather, I could just do it directly in Final Cut, edit it however I want to, like I normally do, but it's not a big deal. Second shoot day, second video. You can see why this one is posted to Nebula and not on YouTube. When it does come out on YouTube, it's gonna be a very different video. On Nebula, I can talk about the cases the way that I want. And I told Wolfgang, the actor, that we have so much more flexibility without needing to worry about subtleties. On this video, it's all FX6, so it's not uploaded in 8K, but faster to shoot, faster to edit. I can't show some of the BTS pictures because of what happened in the case, but it'd be great if you could check it out on the Nebula version on that one. But it's been eight months since I've used the FX6 for the entire video shoot, and I tend to move back and forth between camera kits in the medium term, when you look at it on the time scale of months. It's faster. The look is more inconsistent because I'm not forced to take certain things into consideration, like editing and resolve, pulling my own focus. But I do have to be mindful of the differences in cameras, like how low light is handled, how high lights are handled, and that monitoring is different on the Sony than on the Blackmagic. Also, being on the FX6, you're a little bit more privileged in the sense that you could just push one button and go to 12,800 ISO and basically don't have to care about any lights. Whereas on the Ursa 12K, it needs to be ISO 800 the entire time. You generally don't really want to move it from there. And so the only thing that you can do is add more lights or open up your T-stop. And if you open up your T-stop, then focusing becomes a lot harder and everything's more shallow and it just becomes a lot harder to shoot. So hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes. The original Chubby Emu video is linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.